Yesterday, February 20th, 1766, around noon, Governor Tryon met with Captain Jacob Law, commanding HMS Diligence, Captain Phipps of HMS Viper, Mr. McGuire, Vice Judge of the Admiralty, and Mr. William Dry, Port Collector, all aboard HMS Diligence. It is decided by all present that Captain Lobb, the senior Royal Navy officer present, will demand the return of the papers belonging to the sloop Patience, taken from Mr. Dry's desk, and that he will not release the ship to its master upon any occasion. Because of how the sloop Ruby was seized, Captain Lobb doubts it was a legal seizure and will return that sloop to her master. Satisfied, Governor Trine returned. A visit by some of the leading men of the Cape Fears convinced Captain Lobb to change his mind and release the sloop Patience to her master. This does not please Governor Tryon. Also that evening, Mr. Pennington, Comptroller of Customs for North Carolina, comes to Governor Tryon saying there are armed men searching for him. Governor Tryon offers him lodging and protection. This morning, February 21st, 1766, Governor Tryon prevented Mr. Pennington leaving with Colonel James Moore heading for Brunswick. As Colonel Moore leaves the house alone, several hundred men with firearms are seen moving towards the house. A party of 60 armed men comes down the tree-lined avenue toward Castle Tryon. Cornelius Harnett comes to the governor's house with an armed party and asks to speak to Mr. Pennington. Governor Tryon tells Harnett that Pennington is busy on crown business and any who need to speak with him may do so inside. Harnett tells Tryon that the men intend for Pennington to come with them to Brunswick by force if necessary. Pennington agrees to go with Harnett, but <coughs> Tryon insists he resign as Comptroller first. Pennington resigns and does go with Harnett. It's now nearly midday on Friday, February 21st, 1766, and Cornelius Harnett has brought Mr. Pennington to Brunswick Town, where he and others are surrounded by the men of the Cape Fear. Mr. Pennington, my name is Ward. I'm the master of the sloop Patience. Are you going to enter my sloop into this port of Brunswick? Sir, I cannot enter your sloop into this port. I have resigned my commission as Comptroller of the Customs. I have no authority to do so. Cornelius, did you hear Mr. Pennington had resigned? Yes, it is so. It seems Governor Tryon would not let him come with me unless he had resigned his position. Sir, would you be willing to sign and put your name upon an affidavit stating that you will not enforce the Stamp Act? in these provinces until our redresses have been addressed. Sir, I'm no longer a Crown official. I can see what, I can see no harm in doing so. Well, let us come to this desk with this pencil and paper. Hmm. Will you please affix your name? Thank you, madam. Let's see. How does this sound? I, Pennington, do hereby promise that I will not either directly or indirectly by myself or by any other persons employed under me sign or execute any stamped papers until such time as it will be agreeable to the inhabitants of His Majesty's province of North Carolina. Hereby declaring that I do execute these presents of mine own will and accord without any equivocation or mental reservations whatsoever. In witness hereof I have hereunto set my hand this 19th I beg your pardon, 19th, 21st day of February, 1766, William Pennington. Will that suffice, sir? That will be good, sir. Now, if we could have Captain Loeb here as representative of His Royal Highness's fleet here in the Cape Fear, would you be willing to make the same affidavit that you will not enforce the Stamp Act? in these provinces. As I am compelled by the circumstances, I will sign. Very good, sir. Pencil, take a seat.
I, Jacob Lobb, do hereby promise that I will not, either directly or indirectly, by myself or by other persons employed under me, sign or execute in my office as senior naval officer for the port of Brunswick and the Cape Fear River any stamp papers until such time as it will be agreeable to the inhabitants of this His Majesty's province of North Carolina. Hereby declaring that I do execute these, these presents of my own free will and accord without equivocation or mental reservation whatsoever. In witness hereof, I have hereunto set my hand this 21st day of February, 1766. Thank you, sir. That'll be nice. Mr. William Dry. Yes, sir. Will you be willing to sign an affidavit stating that you will not enforce the Stamp Acts in these colonies until our, re our grievances are redressed? I shall, sir. If I could have you sign this. I, William Dry, do hereby promise that I will not, either directly or indirectly, by myself or by any other perform person employed under me, sign or execute in my office as port collector for the Port of Brunswick any stamped papers until such time as it will be agreeable to the inhabitants of His Majesty's province of North Carolina. Hereby declaring that I do execute these precincts of my own free will and accord without any equivocation or mental reservation whatsoever. In witness hereof, I have hereunto set my hand this day, this 19th day of February, 1766. It is done. Pretty good job, sir. After Messrs. Pennington, Lobb, and Dry signed their affidavits, the clerks of the courts and other head crown officials signed affidavits of their own. The Stamp Act resistance was over. The Stamp Act would not go into effect in North Carolina. The nearly 600 men under arms that Governor Tryon counted from Castle Tryon returned home. Within a few days, instructions would come from England to Crown officials to allow ports and courts to operate as before without stamped paper. Later in the spring of 1766, Parliament would repeal the Stamp Act. In all of British North America, only the Port of Brunswick was closed to trade. The strictest enforcement of the act was met by the most determined resistance in America. Friends of Brunswick Town, we hope you've enjoyed the program tonight. We hope that you'll think a bit about what happened here and the fact that the first act of armed open rebellion against the authority of King George happened on this small plot, plot of land on the Cape Fear River eight years before the Boston Tea Party and without the benefit of war paint and feathers to hide who we were. Thanks for coming out.